Hey everybody, uh, wanted to uh, thought I'd unbox something a little, um, well, something I've had for some time now and uh, hadn't had a chance to get into it. Um, I actually bought uh, this box of starter decks for the Hiberian Gates, Hyborian Gates, I guess you, it's probably a Hyborian Gates, uh, collectible card game. Um, bought the starter, uh, well, starter booster, or I guess a box of starters, um, along with a box of uh, boosters and uh, <clears throat> the intention of actually um, opening them at some point but I kind of forgot about them actually and I was uh, searching for something else and found these um, in my collection uh, area I guess um, in, a, in, a, in a box of other stuff that I put away um, when I guess tidying up. Anyways, uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, open this up. I usually have seen uh, people opening, for the most part, the boosters of this game, um, but not the actual starter. So I thought I'd uh, get one out and um, you know see what this this game is all about. Um, I know it's based on a lot of well, the appeal is the artwork itself. Um, not too sure about the gameplay. I haven't seen anybody. Um, actually play it maybe maybe solo but uh, I don't know at some point that would be um, kind of fun to check out but so if you're ever buying one of these uh, starter sets on eBay for example um, I got this whole box like, really uh, really cheap I'm gonna say I even bought it last year if it wasn't this year it was um, 2020 it was definitely 2019 um, what is this stuff here so you get some kind of perforated cards. Hyboria, Gia, Asgard, 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 and Atlantis. So you got four different areas. Very interesting. Um, here's a rule book with, oh, I think I've seen somebody build these things. It's like, um, it's all perforated around here. It's like a seashell almost, but um, I guess they kind of go into like a little, I don't know, teepee type of thing, like a tent type of thing, uh, tent, tent shape. Let's, let's, let's go with tent um, shape. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not too sure what these are for, but there's some kind of marker maybe. And then so here's the rule book. A war without limits needs heroes without equals. Yeah, that's uh, good advice. I like the um, rule book's actually really good um, in terms of size. It's not your typical 90s um, type of starter deck uh, rule book. So I gotta put ladies all out here. I'm gonna move the knife out of the way so I don't uh, injure myself. So you got. Um, so this, uh, sorry, okay, so 1995, so yeah, it was like one of an early uh, 90s games that come out, that came out during the um, the whole card game craze where every company was trying to, um, you know, capitalize on the money that um, Magic, Magic the Gathering was making. So, so this is a two-player starter set. I'm not sure if there's any particular order. I'm gonna leave them in as is. Um, but uh, yeah, so the artwork, I think most of the artwork is made by uh, Boris Bellagio. And um, definitely a big fan. <laughs> I mean, I like, uh, I like the style. Some of it's very unusual. Some of it is very um, Conan-like, which, which I, uh, if you've seen one of my other videos on Conan the Barbarian, um, sorry, Conan the Collectible Card Game. Um, yeah, you know them a fan. So, okay, let's go through. So, Boon Companions. Um, <laughs> does she weigh a ton? I don't know. A bride called Ton. That's really great. Uh, silencers. I don't know what, um, what are the rares in this at all. It's just kind of interesting to see. I'm going to, as I'm going through a lot of my collection and sharing it, oh, this great, like, um, 
early sort of early '80s hairstyle on the on these uh, on these ladies here. Um, oh, the cards are upside down. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to be able to go through my collection and then actually play um, some of these games as well. Be interesting to see if this is um, got any kind of like really good gameplay. So <laughs> these guys are these guys are really buff. Um, Cact, Quickness, Death Sentinel. So it's a mix of like fantasy and um, sci-fi, which is like technology, I guess. So fantasy, or you got your dragons, and um, and then you got <laughs> Miami Vice guy here. Uh, mountain, Mountain Muster, <laughs> Muster, Mountain Monster, Chaos Monster. I was trying to read both lines at the same time. Um, in my head. Midnight Web Spinner, Chaos Companion. Okay, well, that's kind of unusual at the top there. I'm not sure why these uh, the cards are uh, mixed up so much. Crimson Forest, Power Surge, send foes attached card back to hand, player's choice. <laughs> so I guess your foe has some kind of an attachment this is basically like um, like a bounce. It's very off center. Um, I guess it's like in Magic. There's like a bounce. You can bounce um, like a permanent back to the owner's hand. So it's very similar to that. Uh, here's Cargan Ranger. Send one enemy companion back to hand before combat begins. There's another bounce type of card. Interesting. Okay. I'm not too sure of the objective of the game yet. I'm gonna. I mean, I have to read the uh, the rule book sure um, I may actually um, break this up into uh, I'll probably open up another starter deck again at some point um, so just to you know kind of keep uh, keep the content fresh oh, that's great I like that artwork right there I feel like, uh, like she's jogging or I can't tell if she's got some kind of being interesting to see what the original artwork looks like. You got a bit of sci-fi going on here. She's got some like interesting boots. Uh, so this is some kind of Pontus gate. Discard this gate to eliminate all cards in a dimension. What? Interesting. Okay. Tooth Poss Gate, Hell's Gate with only one L, and then Doris Gate, like Red Sanja. Chaos Monsters lost one in strength when this gate is in play. Okay. All right, so that's um, deck number one. So this is a two-player starter uh deck here. I'm going to open up the other side. Try not to like like really damage the boxes either. I kind of like to keep everything in reasonably good shape. They're a bit snug, the cards. So they, ah, I guess that was on the top and that was on the bottom. Yeah, because all the gates are at the bottom. Okay, so let's go through this deck. It should be different. Uh, so he's different. I think the cats, uh, we saw some of these in the other deck. Final spear, dis discard spear to draw tech from discard pile. Hmm. So you discard this card to draw, I guess, a tech card from. So you switch, you swap the cards. It's not really good, I don't know, not really great card autonomy or economy, I should say. Uh, okay, so she's Merlass, Atlantean Trooper. This kind of reminds me of, um, I had the game itself, um, I was actually just looking at it pretty recently, Afterworld, um, where they have like Atlanteans, Norse, uh, Japanese, and some other, um, forget now, 
some other faction um, in that game. They only lasted like about a year. Just like a, a base set came out and that was it. They canceled it by um, Panini. That's a game. I'll uh, I'll put that on the. I'll shoot some videos on on that game as well because I do have it. Um, the Axer. Now the full art for this too is I'm sure is quite amazing. I think in some case yes yeah here's a good example. So I was just gonna say the um, they use the same art for more than one card. So I guess this is almost like the full side. And maybe this is even bigger than this. They just show him on this card here and then him as part of the, the, the rest of the scene. It's pretty neat that they're side by side. Um, love the 80s hair. Love the 70s. We've got some 70s here, pretty much. Red Blade. Uh, she's a trooper. Card stock feels okay. It's not, um, you know, it's not warped or anything. It's really good quality. I've seen a lot of games where you uh, you pull out the cards and they're all warped, like either like you know down the center or bowing across, like horizontally or vertically. Um, that's pretty nice. She looks like this one looks like uh, Bonnie from uh, Knight Rider. Yeah, the car stock's pretty good, so. Yeah, they all look like they're, I mean, they're well made. You know, who produced them? Cards, all right, they're reserved. Okay. Not too sure of the publisher, but um, other than that, I, I, like, I'm not familiar, familiar with them producing any other uh, games. Lightning Sifter, Sifter? Atlantean Trooper. He's, uh, so he got an Atlantean trooper with like, uh, looks like he's wearing blue jeans. Okay. Um, and then you got here some gates. Whoops. I wonder if they're, uh, they look different. Yeah, so you get some different gates here. So you got Io's gate, Kronos gate, and Numbus gate. So Egyptians, which I think is in part of that game Afterworld. I think maybe the other faction is uh, Egyptians. I'm trying to remember that. Um, Apollo's Gate, and the last one is uh, Boar's Gate. So, uh, interesting. So these are, um, so this is what you get in a starter, two player starter set for uh, Hyborian Gates. Um, again, I bought this like really cheap. I, I think it was like maybe even $10 for the entire thing. I can't, I can't re remember exactly. Um, it was a, there was a local seller, so it was actually really close. I got both boxes, um, quite inexpensive, so I was, I was pretty happy. I, I like to search for um, games where I could just pick up, you know, base starter set, maybe a booster box for, you know, pretty inexpensive, and just kind of get a feel for what the cards are all about. Um, you know, so I can't, you can't collect everything you can have like a little bit of everything i guess and then be okay but you can't dive in and buy thousands of cards um i think this stuff is so easy to find and possibly um either overprinted or just not in demand uh, so it's you know most people that are like card collectors like myself will uh we'll pick it up just to kind of see see what the game's all about and just because you know the artwork's kind of cool and um you know i mean if you're to buy like a like a print of of this artist you know you're gonna pay a de decent amount for it anyways so you get like a small version it's good enough you know you get uh miami vice guy why not right and it's just a mix of everything Anyways, uh, thanks for uh, checking this out. Um, let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more Hyborian Gates. Um, you know, maybe I'll open the um, the booster box as well at some point. Um, you know, I just wanted to get this video done for opening this um, two-player starter set. It's kind of kind of cool that they made it like this. Um, definitely, when you're a, a collector like myself, and uh, what I've been doing is trying to got, get at least a couple of starter sets so I can 
play with someone else and, and learn the game that way or buy at least one and just maybe somehow build a, a, a next like a, a deck to go uh, to go against it um, but yeah it's cool that they designed it this way I think there is a lot of uh, card games that did build like a two-player starter set which is I think is the best the best thing to do to get players um, into into the game so um, anyways thanks for uh, checking this out with me and um, Please like and subscribe down below. I'm trying to uh, build up the channel more, and I'm gonna try to start focusing on a, a few games like uh, some Pokemon, uh, Magic the Gathering, possibly uh, Star Wars, um, uh, like the collectible card game, and of course I like L5R. So we'll see. Um, and BattleTech. So trying to <laughs> trying to nail down which ones I want to really focus on the most, and then um, you know at the same time kind of bring you guys. Um, a lot more like dead card games that you don't normally like often see out and out and about or at least um, uh, on YouTube in terms of content. So thanks a lot and uh, have a great day.